Every day, millions of people take medications for anxiety, allergies, sleep, or bladder problems thinking they're harmless. But what most people don't realize is that many of these medications are quietly increasing their risk of dementia, and they're even changing how the brain itself functions. In fact, taking just one of these medications daily for a year can increase the risk of getting dementia by 50%. And research shows they can cause brain shrinkage and memory loss over time. And the craziest part is that these aren't rare or experimental drugs. They're sitting in medicine cabinets everywhere and they might just be in yours. By the way, I'm Dr. Mitch Rice, a practicing board certified family medicine physician with a focus on integrative care. And today I'm gonna break down the specific medications that are damaging your brain long-term, the science behind how they work, and the safer alternatives you can start using today day instead. So let's start with the basics. The class of medications that we're talking about today is called anticholinergics. And that word just means they block a certain chemical in your brain known as acetylcholine. Imagine your brain as a city filled with communication wires. Acetylcholine is like the electrical current that powers those wires and allows the neurons to talk with one another. Anticholinergic medications block that current and weaken connections between memory centers in the brain like the hippocampus and the cerebral cortex. Over time, those connections fade, leading to brain shrinkage and slower processing speeds. Think about Iron Man, his entire suit, all that power, speed, and precision depends on the energy core in his chest. When that core starts to degrade or gets replaced with an older, less efficient version, everything slows down, his flight systems glitch, and his targeting starts to get fuzzy. That's exactly what happens inside your brain when you take medications with anticholinergic properties over a long period of time. Now here's the part where it gets a little bit concerning. Anticholinergic effects show up in tons of medications, both prescription and non-prescription. A few of the most common examples are allergy medications like diphenhydramine, also known as Benadryl, and other older antihistamine medications, sleep aids such as Tylenol PM or z anxiety medications like hydroxyzine, also known as Vistaril or Atarax, bladder control medications like Ditropan and Vesicare, irritable bowel syndrome, or IBS medications like Bentol, and motion sickness medications like Dramamine and Scopalamine. Each one of these medications alone blocks acetylcholine, and the more you take, the bigger the impact. And this isn't just theory, it's literally been studied over and over again. A meta-analysis of 1.5 million people found that long-term anticholinergic use was an independent risk factor for both Alzheimer's disease and all-cause dementia. Another study of 21 separate trials showed that taking these meds for just three months increased dementia risk by 46% on average. And brain imaging studies from JAMA Neurology revealed that people using anticholinergics had increased brain atrophy, literally brain shrinkage, and reduced brain metabolism in the memory centers like the hippocampus. This means your memory starts to fade and your brain becomes less active on these medications. So this isn't just about feeling groggy or foggy, these medications literally change your brain. And that change can worsen, especially if you're over the age of 60. As we mature in life, our natural levels of acetylcholine begin to decline. So when you add medications that block it, you're essentially speeding up the aging process of your brain. That's why people over the age of 60, especially those who are on multiple medications, are at high highest risk. I see this all the time in my own practice. Someone may be taking hydroxyzine for some anxiety, they may be taking some z to help them sleep at night, and maybe even some Ditropan for some overactive bladder issues, and they take all of these at once. Individually, they block a little bit of acetylcholine, but all together, all of the wires in the brain don't fire as they're supposed to, and this leads to a decrease in overall communication. The decrease in communication leads to parts of the brain shutting down. The higher the anticholinergic burden, 
the higher the dementia risk. That means if you're on two or more of these medications at the same time, the risk doesn't just add up, it actually multiplies. Now, I'm not saying that these medications should never be used. There's certainly a good time and place to use them, especially in the short term. If you take Benadryl every once in a while for an allergic reaction, or you take a z to help you get a good night's rest, you'll totally be fine, and you're not going to increase your risk of dementia. It's when you take these medications day in and day out over a period of months to years. We really wanna try to avoid that from happening, and here's what you can do instead, broken down into two steps. Step one is to go through your medicine cabinet, looking at all of the prescription and the non-prescription medications. Search online or ask your doctor or even your pharmacist which of these medications have anticholinergic properties. Step two is don't stop anything abruptly, especially prescription meds. Talk to your doctor first about safer alternatives or look up the information yourself online. Here are a few examples of some safer alternatives that I recommend. For sleep, try magnesium magnesium glycinate, not magnesium oxide or magnesium citrate, as those cheaper versions of magnesium don't cross into the nervous system as easily and are more likely to give you an upset stomach. Magnesium glycinate is a safer option for increasing the quality of your sleep, much more so than z or Tylenol PM. If you want the best and most affordable version of magnesium glycinate on Amazon and the one I personally recommend to my patients, I'll put a link in the description below. For allergy or allergy-related issues, use second-generation antihistamines like Claritin, Zyrtec, and Allegra. These are much less likely to affect your brain long-term. For optimal control of allergies, try switching between these second-generation antihistamines every three months. So if you take Claritin, do that for three months, then switch to Zyrtec for three months, then Allegra for three months, then back to Claritin for three months, etc. For seasonal allergies, try using nasal sprays like nasal saline or Flonase. For bladder control, ask about Merbetric, which is a non-anticholinergic option. And for irritable bowel syndrome or IBS, you can try some natural options like peppermint oil or following a low FODMAP diet. And most importantly, support your brain with the basics, proper sleep, exercise, nutrition, and managing blood pressure and blood sugar control will all help prevent brain aging. Honestly, the number one best thing that you can do in order to prevent dementia in general is to exercise, as the data shows it to be the most potent anti-brain aging drug on the market today. If you've been on these medications for a long period of time, there's no need to panic, but it is time to act. The goal of this video is not to scare you, but to empower you. Because the truth is, many of these brain changes are preventable once you know what to look for. You deserve to stay sharp, independent, and confident into your later years, not slowed down by side effects hiding in plain sight. Now, if you can't remember every medication we talked about on this list today, that's totally fine. I put together all the most important details from today's video in one resource, and you can check out that resource was completely for free in the link below. Now, if this video opened your eyes to how commonly prescribed medications can actually alter your brain, you might want to see how easy it is for your blood work to be thrown off too. In my next video, I'll walk you through the 10 most common mistakes that people make before getting their blood work done that leads to inaccurate results.